Okay, uh, so I, I have a fictitious data here uh, just to demonstrate what a scatter plot does and talk about uh, the regression uh, more mathematically today. Okay, all right, so uh, here's like uh, annual household income and food expenses. Uh, let's say you have actually have a really big data on uh, how much each household earns per year and how much they spend on food. And these are all in thousands. So uh, one household earns $45,000 per year and spends $8,000 for food and so on and so on, which uh, includes like not just groceries, but outdoor dining and stuff like that. And uh, you might expect that uh, uh, household with Bigger income is probably a bigger family. Maybe this is a single ho single person household, so uh, he's not going to eat that much, and so on, so on. Okay. All right. So uh, let's first discuss the scatter plot. Uh, how how do you get the scatter plot? It's just uh, you think of one as the independent variable and the other as the dependent variable. Uh, in this data set, uh, we would expect that the amount of money that you, you spend on food probably is somewhat related to the household income, right? Uh, because of the reasons I, I said, right? Like if you earn more, then probably you end up eating out more, or maybe the household has a lot more mouth to feed, so they spend more money and so on and so on, okay? All right, so what we do is uh, we can put on the x-axis the income 45, and then 51, and there's a 92, so let's put something like 92 here, and then let's say this is more like uh, 64 here. And uh, if I had a grid, then it would be easier to, to plot, but I don't have one, so I'll just say this is 45, 51, 64, 92. And then you have 8, so let's just say this is 8, and that's 10, 19 is pretty high up here, and then let's say 15 is somewhere in the middle. Okay, and with this, you can plot the data. 45 comma 8 would be here, 51 comma 10 would be here, 92 comma 19 would be up here, and then uh, you might have 64, something like this. So even with this much data, you can kind of see that there's a, some kind of a correlation. And by the way, that is the, the reason why you want to do a scatter plot. Okay? Uh, if you have two set, sets of variables, uh, not necessarily one being dependent on the other. We, we don't know. Let's just draw up two sets of variables. From a from a sample, so uh, you 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 have to get the the values as pairs. So 45 comma 8, 51 comma 10, 92 comma 19, 64 comma 15, and you put them on the scatter plot to see if there is any kind of correlation between the two. So that's something important that you should know. That uh, scatter plot will tell you if there is a correlation between the two variables. Uh, does that mean that they have causation? Does, does one cause the other? Yeah. Sometimes they do, but not always, okay? So uh, one thing that you have to be really careful is that correlation does not mean causation. Um, maybe here it might be causing, or maybe not. Yeah. But that's all you can say for a scatter plot. All right, so here, uh, we talked about a line of best fit, something like this. Uh, and then the difference between the the difference between the value from the line with the actual value from the data, 
which I drew by red, are called residuals. Okay, so. Um, residuals. Okay. And when you say the line of best fit, it means that uh, you're trying to come up with a line that has the least amount of residuals. And uh, the, the formal definition is that you want it to be, uh, you want it so that uh, the sum of squares of these residuals is minimized. And the reason you want to square it is because uh, some are negative and some are positive. Uh, so, so in fact, what happens is that uh, if, you, if you add up all the residuals, you should be getting zero. Because some, sometimes you want to be under, sometimes you want your regression to give you something over. So that uh, you want the sum of the residuals to be zero. But if you take the sum of the squares of residual, you want this blue line, the regression line, uh, so that the sum of the squares will be minimized as possible. Okay? And uh, I'll, I'll talk more about that later. Okay? Now, uh, one important concept that we will need in order to talk more about this, the regression line is something called sum of squares. So let me talk about sum of squares. And these are quantities where you're adding things squared. Okay. So, uh, for example, sum of squares of x is defined as summation of x minus x bar squared. Uh, where x bar is the mean value of all the sample, and x are individual samples. Okay. So I, I, I could be more mathematical <coughs> by saying that these x's are from, from the sample. So th th this, this thing that looks like a claw means from. So x's are from the sample. and for each sample that you have, you do x minus x bar squared. That's, that's the definition of SSX. But usually I'll not write this because that looks really scary. Right? OK. To demonstrate what I mean by that, let's try it, try it here. Okay. So x's are 45, 51, 92, and 64. Now, uh, I actually did a computation before I came here. If you Add these numbers and divide it by 4, you will get 63. So the average of the x's, so I'm thinking of this as x and this as y because this is like on the x-axis and it's, it's like more like the independent variable, whereas this I'm thinking of it as dependent on x. Okay? All right, so you add this and you divide by 4, you get 63. So for, for our case, what, what it's going to be, it'll be, it'll be like... Uh, 45 minus 63 squared plus 51 minus 63 squared plus 92 minus 63 squared plus 64 minus 63 squared. So you, you see what this symbol means, right? And simply you just take each individual data point, subtract the mean value, square it, and add it. Okay? And uh, if you do this with a calculator, you're going to get, uh, I calculate it as 1310. The value is not that important. Uh, but I do want to point out that uh, we have done such calculations before in the beginning of the semester because when we defined the variance, it was exactly this, right? In fact, um, the way you calculate the sample standard deviation of x would be to take the square root of the sum of squares and divide it by n minus 1 and take this, yeah. So that, that's the formula. That's the, that's the value of the standard deviation of the sample. In our case, n is 1, 2, 3, 4. n is 4. 4 minus 1 gives you 
3. So if you divide 1310 by 3 and take the square root, uh, I did the calculation. This comes out as 20.9. So that's the standard deviation of this sample. Now, is uh, it n four? Huh? N is four, right? N is four. Yes. Uh, now, you can do the same thing for s s x. By the way, I meant this s to be lowercase s, whereas this these two s's being capital. Okay. Usually, you put for sum of squares, you put both s's as capital. Okay. Oh, that not x. S s y. Okay. So you would do the same thing for s s y, right? You can do the same thing for SSY, which is Y minus Y bar squared. And uh, you, you do this calculation, you get, you get uh, it's the same story. It's like 8 minus, uh, the, the average of these values com comes out to be 13. So you just take this. like that, right? And then the, the result would be 74. And likewise, you can calculate the standard deviation in the y. Again, do this, and that came up to be 4.97. So hopefully these examples will make you understand what I mean by SSX and SSY. Okay. And then uh, in addition to this, there is something called the covariance, oh no, it will be a little bit different. Uh, there's something called SSXY related to covariance, which we didn't learn. But the definition of this is like, you take x minus x bar, y minus y bar, and you add them up. That's called covariance. Now, let's think about this quantity and see why it's an interesting value. Uh, so if x is bigger than the average and y is also bigger than the average, then the product will be positive, right? And if both x and y's are <coughs> below the average, then you multiply, then it will again be positive. So what happens is that uh, you're counting values which are both above average or both below average that contributes positively to this value, whereas if one goes higher than the average and this goes below the average, then uh, you would get a negative contribution because one's positive, one's negative, right? And w what happens is that uh, if your graph is like this, so it's positively correlated, okay? this, this will be negatively correlated, right? So this is positively correlated. In that case, uh, you, you'll see that th these are usually positive. So then you get a high positive value if it's positive cor positively correlated. Now if it's negatively correlated, then you'll see the opposite. Uh, when one, one thing is bigger than the average, it's likely that the other value would be uh, below the average. So it will give you a uh, negative value for a negatively correlated case. And then furthermore, uh, if it's all over the play, place, like scattered so that you, don't really, you really can't say there's a correlation, uh, in such a case, then this will be like sometimes positive, sometimes negative. So overall, when you add them up, it will be a value close to zero. So you, you can kind of see that this, is, this should play a role in determining uh, whether your, your scatter plot has correlation or not, okay? So uh, later on, I I'm going to show you that this, this is actually part of the formula for the correlation coefficient. 
All right. Now, uh, notice that uh, if I put SSXX, so replace Y by X, then you get XX bar, and these will be replaced by X so that you get X minus X bar. And that's exactly the same as the first one, right? So depending on your, your textbook, I'm just sticking to this one because our textbook is using that, but sometimes this is written in other books as SSXX, okay, sum of squares XX. That's the same thing as this one. Some, sometimes some places they might write SSYY. Okay? Uh, if you see that, you just have to remember it as that, okay? Now, I want to prove a very simple formula uh, because they, they often appear. And, and by the way, uh, when I say proofs, uh, I know that a lot of you are immediately not interested, but uh, you, you heard of the, these uh, language education programs called immersive uh, programs, but where you, you're learning a foreign language and you don't understand the thing, but you just try to focus and they just throw out the entire language at you. Like you just keep listening and listening. At some point, things click, right? So uh, even if uh, I'm sure I'm, I'm going to show you a few proofs today, and if they they are never going to be on the exam or uh, it's not really going to add anything to your grades, it, I, I I promise you, if you focus on the proofs, uh, you will get something out of it. Okay? So just think of these. Uh, this one is an immersive education. What I want to show you is the following, that uh, SSX is actually the same as sum of the squares minus 1 over n times sum of x squared. So let me give you a proof for that. So first, you have uh, SSX defined as x minus x bar squared. And then, this, if you have two things squared, if you FOIL this out, you're going to get x squared minus 2 times x bar x plus x bar squared. Okay. So, uh, I'm trying to say that if you have a minus b squared, what's that? a minus b times a minus b. So that's like a times a minus a b minus b a plus b squared, right? So it's like a squared minus double the product. This is twice of a b, right? And then you have b squared. So I'm using that. And then, because these are just being added, this, this summation is just saying that these are added, right? So you're adding this thing, you're adding this thing, you're adding this thing. So you can just split them and say, I can add these first, and then I can add negative 2 x bar x, and then I can add uh, x bar squared separately. And already I like this because that, that's same as this, okay? So all we have to do is try to figure out what these are. All right. Uh, now, if you have a bunch of summations, you can factor things out. Right? So, so you have to use your imagination here. They, these are a bunch of additions. So in this context, it will be like negative 2 times 63 times 45, negative 2 times 63 times 51, negative, three times, uh, negative 2 times six, 63 times 92. So you have something times 45, something times 51, something times 92, something times 64 added together. If you have that, you can factor the common number out. You know that, right? So you can you can take this and see that this is this is a, a, a common factor. It never changes. X bar is a single number, whereas x x is our all those changing numbers, right? So anything that doesn't change, 
you can factor it out. So you get sigma x squared minus 2x bar summation of x. Okay. And then the same thing is here. Uh, here, uh, these are numbers that don't change, right? And you add that n number of times because it, this, this is added n times, same as the sample size, right? So if you have, have the same thing added over and over again, what would you get? Well, that's a nice quiz to see if you're listening or not. If you added x bar squared four times, what would you get? 4x four four. Four bar squared, right? So when n is 4, it would be 4x bar squared. If you add this five times, it would be 5x bar squared, right? So this is going to be n x bar squared. OK. Now, uh, we can see that, uh, how do you get x bar? x bar is like uh, averages. You, you add every element, and you divide it by n, n right? So you can re replace these by this, and here's what you get. So using this, this is summation of x squared minus uh, 2 summation of x over n times summation of x plus n summation of x over n squared. And uh, this one is summation of x times summation of x, so that's summation of x squared. So it's 1 over n times summation of x squared. And then plus, this is n squared and summation of x squared, right? So you have n summation of x squared over n, n squared, by the way, n squared. And one of the n's will cancel this n in the, the denominator. <coughs> And if you do that, then you see that these are exactly the same things. But this has negative 2 in front, this is 1 in front. So if you combine the like terms, you end up with 1 over n sigma x squared. OK? So that's what you get. And. Uh, and you can do the same thing for the other ones as well. I don't want to bore you to death with the other ones. It's basically the same story. So here's our result. We found that this is sum of, sum of x squared minus 1 over n sum of x squared outside. This one has square inside, whereas this one has square outside. Same thing for SSY. It's going to be, oh, sorry, it should be Y. SSXY this will be same thing as sum of X times Y minus 1 over N times sum of X times sum of Y okay. so we, there are these formulas that uh, we're where it's true, okay? Okay, so now let's move on to uh, formula for the regression line y hat is equal to a plus b x. Okay. All right. So uh, by y hat, I mean 
these values right here. The values that are on the regression line, those are called y hat. And the, the actual data points from the, the, the raw data are called y. So what we call the residuals can now be written as a formula. So uh, we have E. So I want to start by saying residuals have the formula that E is equal to y minus y hat. Okay, so it's the difference between the true value minus the estimation given by the regression line. Okay. That difference is called is called the residuals. And uh, we want to find now the, the explicit formula for A and B. And you will see that uh, the, the formulas that we, we use will involve these sum of squares somehow, OK? Uh, but uh, we're we are going to work with two rules here. So one thing is, so uh, rule number one, I already sa stated this, but let me write it. The sum of the residuals should be zero. Okay? In other words, sometimes it's above, sometimes sometimes y is above y, y hat. So sometimes your residuals are positive, sometimes the residuals are negative. And because you're trying to minimize the residuals, if you uh, add them up, you better have zero. Okay? And rule number two would be that uh, A and B are such that A B minimizes sum of E squared, the residual squared. Okay. Now, it, this might look a little cryptic, but if you think about it, it makes sense. See, what does Y, y hat depend on? It depends on A and B, right? Because it has A and B there. Okay? X is given by these values, so I can't control them. So it's really, it really depends on A and B. Okay? And then, uh, since E also has Y and y, y hat, E also depends on A and B. So I can tweak the values of A and B such that this is minimized. Then it's going to be the true regression that we want. Okay? That, that's what I'm saying. All right, so let's get the formula for regression from these two. From the first one, here's what we have. Uh, we'll, we'll just write down sigma of, uh, the, if I replace e by y minus y hat, it's y minus y hat. But what's y hat? y hat is a plus bx, right? Okay. And that has to equal to 0. And uh, that means sum of the y's minus sum of the a's minus sum of the b's should be 0. So sum of the y's minus sum of the a's minus sum of the bx's should be 0. So instead of adding, calculating this and adding them at the end, it's same thing as adding these separately, adding these separately, adding these separately, just like this, and doing this calculation. That the left side should be the same, right? But then, uh, this, you can use a similar argument as before. So what do you get if you, A is a cost of value, right? If A is some number. What do you get if you add A again and again and again? What would you get? Oh, but, but there's this addition is over the sample size, right? So you're adding this how many times? N. N times. So what would you get? Right. A-N, right. Okay, and th then this is a common, common factor. You can factor that out. So factoring out, you get this. And uh, I look at this and say, hey, I think this is a good equation for me to solve for A. See, you have two options. You can solve for A or solve for B. But you get something more meaningful if you solve for A. So what you do is you can divide everything by N. 
and move this A to the other side, and the result is that you get A equals to uh, 1 over N summation of Y minus B times 1 over N summation of X. Okay. Now, what is adding all the Y's and dividing by N give? What does this give you? If you add all, all, the, all the values of y and divide by 4, what would you get? Average. You get the average. So this really says this is the same as y bar, y, average of y, minus b times average of x. Okay? So that's what we get from the rule number 1. So far, so good? Okay, now let's try to minimize this. But before we minimize, try to minimize this, uh, we, we have to recall something about uh, the qu quadratic functions. So let me let me write it in this corner. Please. So let me, let me write here. What value of x makes a x squared plus b x plus c minimized? So you have a parabola. Parabolas are minimized at the vertex, right? Do you remember when it's minimized? Do you, you, you know the formula for the x that minimizes that function? I'm sure you would recall if I tell you tell you that t tell you the formula. You mean the quadratic formula? Not the quadratic. The quadratic formula will give you the zeros of the quadratic function. I'm talking about the the x coordinate of the vertex. Does anyone remember the x coordinate of the vertex? Vertex formula. No. Uh, squared plus y squared. No. Okay, I, I, I'm pretty sure you know. Uh, x equals to negative b over 2a. You heard of that, right? Yeah. That's where the vertex, the x coordinate of the vertex is. Okay. Uh, now, for, for this, I want to use this to, to minimize because this, this will happen to be something like that. But uh, in order to use this, I need to change the letters because it's, it's, it's a little bit confusing. So uh, I want to rewrite this by saying instead of A, B, C, I'm going to re rewrite capital A. And instead of X, I'm going to use B. is minimized when b is equal to negative capital B over 2 times capital A. So that's, that's what we're going to use. Okay. All right, so now let's carry on with this second rule. So what does the second rule say? The second rule says I need to minimize e squared, but what is e? e is this, but what is that? That's y minus a plus bx, right? So what we need to do is I want to do y minus a minus bx squared. Okay. And that one is, well, now I'm going to replace a by what we found out here. So it's going to be y minus y bar minus, uh, actually, it's a double negation. You're subtracting a, but there's a minus there. So it would be plus bx bar minus bx squared. Okay. So that's what we need to minimize. And uh, because we already found out what a is in terms of b, here, uh, x, x bar, y, y bar, these are values that's already from the sample. So, if, for example, if, if your sample is like this, those are already given, okay? What's not known is this b. So, uh, we're trying to think about this as a, something that depends on b. So, it's more like a function with respect to b. And we're trying to find the value of b that would minimize this, right? Okay, so let me rewrite this again in the following form. I like y minus y bar, 
uh, and I can also factor a b and rewrite this as x minus x bar. Now, why, why do I like that? Well, that's, that's because I, I like these. Okay. So these will come up. If I, if I write it like that, then I can make these appear. Okay? All right, and then, uh, again, we have this a minus b squared. So I, I talked about foiling things, right? So the result of that is you square the first, you square the second, But in the middle, there's a twice, you have to double the product with the minus. So it's minus 2b, y, sorry, y minus y bar, x minus x bar. So all I did was I, I just square this, square this, and then you, I doubled the product in the middle. Now already you're seeing something that we talked about before, sum of squares, right? So this one right here, that's the sum of squares. Oh, let's rewrite this different sums here. Okay. I'm going to switch these two around, so write x minus x bar first. And the last one would be uh, summation of b squared x minus x bar squared. And then, uh, you see, this, this is a constant common factor, so I can factor it outside. This, again, is a common factor I can factor outside. I can't bring this out because uh, x is changed, right? x bar stays the same, but x is changed. You're adding them over the sample, so x could be like, 45, 51, 92, 64 changes. So uh, these you can't bring it outside this, the the sub summation. But if there's something, if, if there's a factor that doesn't change, you can always bring it outside the summation. So the result is like the following: it's a sum of the y minus y bar squared minus 2b summation of x minus x bar y minus y bar plus b squared summation of x minus x bar squared. Now what do you see? What's this one? Sum of squares of? S, S, Y. Yeah. S, S, Y minus 2B. What's this one? S, S, X, Y, right? Okay, plus B squared. S, S, Okay, so what we managed to prove is that the sum of those residual squares is same as this. Okay? Uh, the formula itself is not the important part. Uh, the result of this is what's important that you have to know. The way we, we calculate is not what you want to know. Uh, but still, it's good to, to see the proof. Okay? All right, so uh, what's our conclusion? When is this minimized? When B is? Look at this. When B is? So it's negative. What, what takes the role of capital B here? Here's a B, right? And this is multiplied. Good? So that's, that's the B. So in, in this formula, what takes, uh, what can be thought as the capital B is negative two s s x y divided by what takes the role of a? Uh, hmm? No. What takes the role of this capital A here? So compare this one. Oh, s s. What? Which one? S s. X, yeah, SSX, yeah. twice of that. And then negative, negative cancels, and two, two cancels. So here is a important result. The important result is that uh, uh, regression 
line is y hat equals to uh, a minus b x uh, plus sorry plus b x with b equals to s s x y divided by s s x and a is equal to y bar minus b times x bar. So I'm just copying this result here and that result first. So technically, you can, you can calculate the b and a from here as well. Okay. Yeah, I should have done that. I didn't have it in my notes, so uh, should we do it? Let's see. So uh, okay, so I, I don't want to spend time punching numbers in the calculator, but let's just see what happens here. So what is SSXY? That's, that's uh, 45 minus 63 times 8 minus 13. So that, that's from the very first one. Remember, SSXY means uh, you subtract the mean value from each one of them you multiply. So 40, the top row has 63 as the mean. The bottom row has 13 as the mean. So 45 minus 63. 8 minus 13, that's multiplied plus uh, 51. You know, somebody help me out here. Uh, can you calculate this with your calculator? Because I don't want to spend time doing it. So 10 minus 13 plus 92 minus 63. And then 19 minus 13. This is a good chance to earn brownie points, you know. Right. 64 minus 63. And 15 minus 13. Okay, what did you get? Anyone quick? Not that quick. Still have to wait. Good with calculation, but not that good to just do it in my head. I wish I could. 302. Huh? 302. What? 302. 302. Thank you. 302. Okay. All right. And then uh, SSX, well, that one I actually calculated. Uh, th this will be. Well, I, I actually said it in the beginning of the lecture, and I'll just quote that one. The value is uh, 1310. So, what's B? 302 minus 1310, right? What would you get? What do you get? 302 minus 1310. Minus or divide? You you divide, yeah. Three oh two divide by thirteen ten. Zero point two three one. Okay. Sorry. All right. And uh, once you have that, you can also calculate a by uh, y bar is uh, thirteen. And x bar is 63, as I said, right? And this will come out as negative uh, 1.52. And in fact, I taught you how to do the regression analysis with your calculator, right? If you punch with your calculator, if you punch these raw data as L1 table and L2 table, and you do the regression t-test, uh, linear regression t-test, then you will exactly get A as negative 1.52 and B equals to 2, 0.231. So it does give you the correct answer. Now, on the exam, uh, you might think, oh, well, so there are two ways to get the linear regression line, which is to do it this way or uh, from this, just 
use the linear regression t-test. Unfortunately, what I'm going to force you guys to do is I'll just not give you the raw data, but give you SSX, SSY, SSXY. Okay? Yeah. And then from there, you'll be forced to use these formulas to figure out what A and B are. Okay? So that's, that's, that's why we're doing this today. Okay? So you're still, uh, well, these formulas will be given in the formula sheet, but uh, you'll still need to know these identities, uh, how to use them. You, you will have to know how to use these values, right? A any questions so far? Okay. Now, then we talked about this R squared coefficient of determination. So here, I want to think about this value here, y minus y bar. So these are values like 8 minus 13, which is negative 5, 10 minus 13, negative 3, that will be 6, and 2. So negative 5, negative 2, negative 3, 6, and 2. So these values then you, you can obtain by taking individual y data points and subtract the mean value. That's the amount of variation, right? So uh, it, it's amount, the amount of deviation from the mean. This is 5 lower than the mean, 3 lower than the mean. This data point is 6 more than the mean. This is 2 more than the mean. Okay, so this right here is what we call the deviation from the mean. However, there is uh, also y minus y hat. Uh, do you remember what y hat was? What was y hat? It was the regression data, okay, y hat. So uh, y minus y hat was called what? E. This is called the this is called the E, and it's what's called the residual, right? Or you can also say deviation from regression. And then y hat minus y is it's the deviation of regression from the mean. Okay. Now at this point, let's imagine the following. Let's say you are given only the x data points and this blue line, the regression line, and you weren't given this y, y in the initially, okay? So all you are given is the regression line with this, okay? Then you can kind of make a prediction about the actual data, right? Your prediction will be these values, okay? These are predicted by the regression points. And the deviation of these predicted values from the mean is what you would expect, right? So this, this is, in other words, expected deviation from the mean. Okay. 
On the other hand, when you actually get the, the, the date, raw data set and find that they are further deviated from the mean this way, then you would say, oh, this residual is deviation unexplained by regression. Okay? So, so, uh, so. So you have one part that's not ex explained by regression, but this part, the deviation from the, oh, sorry, this should be y bar. Uh, so the de deviation of y hat from the mean uh, would be a deviation that's explained by the regression, okay. whereas this is additional error, which is unexplained by the regression. Now, there's a relationship between these three quantities. It's that y minus y bar is equal to y minus y hat plus y hat minus y bar. And it makes sense because if you add them, minus y hat and plus y hat will cancel. So you get that, right? And then uh, additionally, what you can do is you can take uh, some of the squares of y minus y bar squared, which is SSY, that's what we called it. And if you do the computation, you'll see that this is same as y minus y hat squared plus y hat minus y bar squared. Now, it, it seems that going from here to the, there is merely like squaring and adding, but the actual proof of going from here to there is quite involved. You need to use the formula for the uh, y hat. y hat is a plus bx, and then you, you have to use the definition of a and b. So it's actually a very long process from here to there. I, uh, I don't have the time to, to show it to you, uh, although it's, it's not anything harder than what we've done, okay? So uh, it's not anything harder than what we've done, but still it's a, a long calculation going from here to there. So we'll just have to accept it uh, for the lack of time, not because the math is hard. Okay, uh, but here's uh, what we're going to name, name these. Uh, we'll have names for these, okay? So this one is called the, well, we already have the name, it's SSY. But this, the difference between the y and the y hat, this, this is what? This is the error, right? That it's the residual, right? So we can, uh, we can just rewrite this as a, this portion right here is really summation of e squared, <coughs> the thing that we want to minimize, right? Uh, but we are going to name it as S, S, E, sum of the errors, okay? Sum of squares of E. Plus, uh, this one is the deviation of the regression, right? So the sum of squares of the regression, because y hat is given by the regression line, so we, we'll, we'll name it as SSR. Okay? So uh, this is more like total difference squares, total deviation squared. This is residual squared. This is total of the regression squared. And this R squared, which we call the coefficient of determination, is how much you expect so, so as I said, uh, this, this value, this, this is the deviation that you expect, or deviation that can be explained by the regression. Okay? So this is how much uh, it deviates from the mean by, uh, explained by the regression, divided by the total 
change. Total sum of squares. Okay? So that's called coefficient of determination. And the meaning is exactly what I said. It's that uh, uh, it's the explained regression uh, divided by the so it's the ex expected deviation divided by the total deviation. In other words, uh, it tells you what percentage of the data variation, the variation of the data, is explained by the uh, by the regression line. Okay? Now, uh, the the word I said is vari variation, uh, uh, which is related to variance. If you recall, if you divided the sum of squares of y and divided by n minus one, you get the uh, sample variation, right? Same thing, if you divide this by n minus 1, you get the, the variation of the regression. So uh, you're really taking the, the ratio between the two variations, or two variances, and you're saying that the, the, uh, pers this percentage of the variation uh, is explained by the regression. That's what it means. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so now uh, in the last lecture, I said this is same as the Pearson R squared. Uh, yeah, but the thing is, there, there is actually a, a more intuitive reason, uh, formula for R, and the reason why that, that t tells you how much uh, the two variables are related. Uh, but anyways, uh, here's what I want to say. Uh, so there are some, some additional formulas that you can get, which is that, uh, see, SSR is the the sum of uh, some of the y hat minus y bar <coughs> squared and because of uh, rule number one that I said that the uh, their averages should be the same. So, you know, average of y is same as y hat's average. Then they should be the same because this, this regression is trying to have the best fit. So in terms of the average, they should be equal. So what I can say is that this is really same as this, and that's same as uh, y hat is a plus bx, right? Minus a plus bx average. And the uh, average of a constant is just itself. So what this becomes is a plus bx minus a minus bx bar. And these cancel. Oh, sorry, this should be squared. So this, this ends up being, you, you have a column b which you factor and bring it outside. This is b squared times a uh, x minus x bar squared, which says that this is equal to sum of squares of x. So it, it's a, you end up with a very interesting thing that uh, SSR is same as b squared SSX, but you can also use this identity that b is equal to SSXY divided by SSX. Remember this? I, I proved this. Yes? Why does it, why can you take the bar away from A? Uh, if, if you have the same number repeated, what's the average? It's itself, right? If you have, say, 7, 7, 7, 7, what's the average of that? 7, 7. 7, seven right? If the same number is repeated over and over again, same thing as itself. Okay. 
And if you have some number multiplied to each sample size, that's the same as taking the average of that and multiplying. Taking the average of bx is the same as taking the average of x and then multiplying by b. It's good that you're interested in this. That's very good. Okay. So you have SSX. So what you get is that uh, you get SSXY squared over SSX. Okay. And that means that you can replace this SSR by that. And the result is that you get uh, R squared equals to SSXY squared over SSXSSY. Okay, because uh, you have to divide by SSY, so SSY goes under. So that you get an equation for correlation coefficient, which is uh, the uh, Pearson R, Pearson correlation coefficient R, which is SS xy divided by the square root of ssx, ssy. Okay? So that's, that's what you get. All right, I, I have a lot of material to cover today, so I'm sorry if I go slightly over time, but bear with me here. Uh, okay, so, so those are the formulas that I listed here in, in the handout. You, you can see them. Right. And then uh, the last topic is standard error and deviation of B. Okay, so. Um, I want to state by saying SY, the standard deviation of Y, as I said earlier, this is sum of squares of Y divided by N minus 1. Uh, when it comes to this E, this value E, which is this one right here, if you take the standard deviation of E, this will be sum of squares of E divided by N minus 2. And uh, the, the reason that, uh, as opposed to dividing by n minus 1, you divide by n minus 2 is because this one has two fixed numbers, a and b, which reduces the degrees of freedom of this quantity by 2. So it, it, it has less freedom to vary. So for example, if you just, if you're, if you just have two sample size, then this will always be 0. And that doesn't mean anything because uh, if you have two data points, you can always connect by a line. And even if it's the, the regression line has zero error, it doesn't mean that uh, the two values are highly cor correlated at all. Okay? So uh, you want to talk about the standard error of uh, standard deviation of the error, then you have to divide by n minus 2. That's what I want to say. And then. Uh, the standard deviation of B is given by the standard error divided by square root of standard deviation of X. Okay. Now, um, why is that? Is there a good reason? I don't think I, I, uh, I, can't, I can explain that. Uh, so we'll, we'll just have to, uh, to accept this. Okay, so. The standard deviation of B is you, you further divide this by standard de, uh, sum of squares of X. And then uh, this kind of gives you uh, the confidence interval for B. Okay. So here, here's, here's what I'm trying to say. Let's say You have a bigger data of household income and food expenses, right? Of a uh, uh, thousand people. Okay. Now, does that give you the correct 
correlation and the uh, regression line for the entire data of this state? You don't, okay? So it's still a sample, right? So what's happening is that if you have, so the problem is y hat equals a plus bx obtained from sample, sample is not the true regression. So you might ask, then if I say y hat equals to alpha plus beta x, where we use the Greek letters for the population values, OK? Uh, then what is the confidence interval for beta? That's the question, right? So beta should be between two values, and b plus some error of b, b minus error of b. And you'll be asking, what's the formula for eb? And the formula for the error is given by, it's a t critical times the standard deviation of b. So uh, we don't have time to do any of these examples, but uh, that's the formula. And next time, I'll, I'll show you some examples using this.